Hi, my name's Greg Jameson, and I'm the course leader for game art and game programming at DBS Institute. And today, I'm going to show you how to export a model out of Maya and import it into Unreal Engine. So we're inside Maya, and we are going to export an FBX model from Maya and import it into Unreal Engine. I have a simple model here, so just and it's been textured already. Uh, and you can use a much more complex model than this as long as your materials are all displayed and you've finished texturing. We can have a look inside our hypershade and we can see how these textures are connected. So we've got four separate maps through an Arnold AI uh, standard surface shader. So all our texturing is done, all our modeling is done. Now we just need to get it ready for export. First thing we're going to do is select both the objects that we want. And then we're going to shift and click and that grabs both those objects in object mode. Uh, if you want to change to object mo mode, ho hold down right click and you'll see the menu come up and go to object mode. It's also in your outliner and this is an easier way to do it is grab it in the outliner and we are going to group those together. And you can see that is now grouped in our outliner. The next thing we need to do is delete the history, any operations you've done up to now, any modeling or texturing operations, just to optimize it for export. So if we go to and hit delete by type and history. Next thing we need to do is if your center pivot is not in the center, like mine is, which is at zero, 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 if you hold down D, that will change the gizmo and you'll be able to move that gizmo in any direction and align it to um, zero, zero, the origin or anywhere else that you would like it to align to. And then the last thing we're going to do is we are going to freeze transformations and that locks in the pivot point and any other uh, positioning data. Now the model is ready for export. You make sure the group is selected in the outliner. So the next thing we need to do is check that our FBX plugin is active. The FBX file format is a proprietary 3D file format which allows you to not only embed geometry data, but you can embed animation and lighting data as well really useful for jumping between 3D software or from 3D software into games engines such as Unreal. So if we go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and this displays what plugins are loaded, what you want to auto load upon startup. We're looking for FBX, fbxmaya.ml. If you're doing this on the Mac, uh, that file name might be different might be fbxmaya.bundle, but it will, there will only be one FBX Maya option. That's already loaded, that's already plugged in, we can see that. If it's not, make sure you check these and then you press refresh. Okay, so we know that's ready and that's good to go. We're ready to export. So if we go to File, Export Selection, and we click on the little box, the dialog comes up and it allows us to choose the file type. You might be on default Maya binary. Make sure you have selected FBX export. Once that's clicked on, you have these include options. We want to make sure include texture info is, um, is checked. We're not so interested in this other stuff. You can keep it if you want. It's dependent on what's embedded in your model or what you want to transfer over. Uh, once that's done, click on Export Selection. Great, so now we just got to locate where we want to put it. Let's go to the FBX library. And we'll just put this in this new folder. Building two, let's go building underscore two. Okay, great, I'll put it in here. Now, We've got to check these options now and make sure that 
On our include options, we've got include texture info that we collapse the geometry option to get the embed media. This must be checked. This is the critical check that will make sure that your textures are assigned to the FBX and they're actually embedded within the file. The last really important part is this FBX file format, which will only become active when you select FBX as the file format. If you can't see this, you haven't selected the correct file format and you need to change this to ASCII. It will default be on binary, make sure it's on ASCII. A fairly recent version, you don't want something from 2006, but you don't want something from 2024 because it might have some compatibility issues. Once you're happy with that, label it and then export selection. That's that part of the process done and ready for import into Unreal. Right, so here we are in Unreal. We've opened up a blank pro project. Next thing we need to do is open up a new level. Um, we'll go for this basic here. Now the reason that I'm doing this and I find particularly when you're starting to work out how to import FBX and models is to use a project that you are not actually working on so you can ensure that the import uh, and your methodology is correct. That way once you have got it into a uh, blank project you can be sure of what the operations are for when you do it into a project that's already populated. So my advice is, if you're new to the FBX import cycle, import export cycle, then put it into a blank project first, work out how to do it, and then go back to your populated project, your half finished project, and then start importing your assets that way. So what we're gonna do now is import uh, uh, FBX. Okay, so I'm opening up the content drawer and there's a few ways you can do this. You can either go to your files and drag and drop it in. You can right click, you can import. Uh, there's an import icon here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is go to my building two, which is over here. My building two is in there. And I'll drop that in. It'll give you this dialogue. Just make sure that Skeletal Mesh and this is unchecked. Import all. You'll see a dialogue message. You can just clear that. And it's given us the geometry and the material here. Now, there's one thing we're missing. We're missing the maps, the original maps. So I'm going to grab those maps. So in here, you can either drag in a folder and do it this way. And it'll uh, create a folder for you automatically. You can see we're inside that folder is where the actual maps are okay but we're going to start on putting in a geometry so grab those two pieces of geometry and if you have a grouped model you will see all the individual parts appear as individual static mesh right but you just put them all in together and they keep their original position um, and should look exactly as they were in your 3D software. Now I'm just scaling that up because my metrics do not match up. That's another thing to look out for when you're exporting to make sure your metrics in your 3D software, whether you're using Maya or Blender, match up to the Unreal metrics or you're going to have to scale it manually when you go in like this. So you can see there's no materials, so I need to attach those materials and that means going into this building material which has not been populated yet and looks like this. So this is the default. You can see it's got a default base color and I need to attach the maps to this node to get my materials. So in my content drawer, I'm gonna drag these in. Let's start one by one. This is my diffuse map or sometimes called albedo or in, in Unreal, it's called base color. I'm going out of the RGB output into the base color input and you can see already we're starting to see we've got some texture next thing is going to be my normal uh, my roughness map so I'm going to put that there RGB out into roughness get a little bit of roughness on there I'm going to zoom out a bit give myself some room okay and then the next thing is going to find my normal map 
which should give me that should give me some additional geometry in terms of extruding. And if, we have a, if we save this for a minute and we can quickly check what this looks like in real time, you can see that those textures have applied pretty much the same way. Um, and you can double check this in Unreal by adjusting the directional light. So it'll give you some shadows and you can start to see how it looks under different lighting conditions. But we can see that our normal map is taken and all the other textures are there. The only thing that is slightly different is the emissive map, which is gonna require a few more nodes. So if I go back into that material, my content drawer, go back to those maps, and here is my emissive map. Now, in Maya, this yellow acted as our emissive color. In Unreal, we need to change this to black and white. So the last map, the emissive map, we have imported to here. We need to set up a little mini network before plugging that into our emissive color. The other thing to note here is we've got a yellow and black map, and Unreal needs to use a white map. So, uh, if we double click on the map itself, we should be able to adjust this in terms of taking the saturation right down. And that changes it to white. And that will be much easier for Unreal to be able to pick up on. Yes. Okay, so back into here, back into materials. And you can see that that map has changed. We've got this to white now. And then back into the material. Okay. Now we need to set up a couple of multipliers. So if we right click, go to maths, go to math, looking for multiply. And then we need another one of those. Great. And we're going to connect these together. We're going to go from the out here into the A there. We're going to connect the RGBA to node A here. So I'm going to bring up a constant and we're going to change that to a parameter. And we're going to call it brightness. Let's set that value to one, and then let's plug it in to here. Onto the second node, and then we're gonna create another constant, constant three. That's gonna be our color. So I'm just gonna shift the brightness over, make a bit more room for this, and I'm gonna assign the color to yellow, double clicking on that, press okay, and then that then gets plugged into here. Now this emissive texture, starting from here, is ready to go into, we into your emissive color there. And then that is the setup for attaching your materials inside Unreal. And we can check that this is working, so if we just adjust our directional light, we should start to see that emission coming out. So that's how you get your models out of Maya and into Unreal. For more information about our games courses, visit the DBS website. And don't forget to subscribe to the DBS YouTube channel for more game art content.